Hi, this is analysis of algorithms. We're going to do the homework problems for chapter 15. We have these problems to do. Chapter 15 is dynamical programming and it's fairly technical. I'm not going to go through every single detail here. I'm going to give you the answers but not go through every single detail. So let's do the, the first one. 15-2, um, that's the matrix multiplication problem. We're doing the first problem. They give you six matrices. Now I have to say, of course you work this out first and then you're just checking your answers here. But if you worked out the answers for six matrices, it's a long time. I won't ask you such a thing on a test. I will ask you for four matrices. There's no problem asking you for four matrices. It's work. We did it in class. You can watch it again on the video of the, of the class. Um, but let's do it. Okay, this is the final answer. Okay, worked it out before. And this is the final answer. The amount of multiplications you're going to need is 2010. Okay, this is the matrix that gives you the minimum number of uh, multiplications needed. This is what's called the root matrix, which tells you what the root is. Okay, so I worked it out here. You have to go through each one and figure out e each one. Okay, great. Now, here's the matrices, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, okay? I just want to show you how you parenthesize, put parenthesize in whether it's what order it should be done if you're going to do it. So watch how to read it from the root matrix, from the root matrix. Again, this is your final answer, this is your final answer here. Okay, if you want to go from 1 to 6, from A1 to A6, what should be your final multi your big multiplication and the answer is 2 so we're going to do it like this after 2 so here's the big matrix okay great now tell me this we don't really need how do you multiply a1 and a2 a1 and a2 from 1 to 2 okay so it's after here so that's that multiplication here there's only one way of multiplying a1 to a2 so I don't have to put in parentheses here to do that but I do have to do it over here, from A3 to A6. So I go to A3 to 6, 3, 6, and I get 4. So it's going to basically split up like this. Okay, so th that is the main answer. Um, just to, to put it in, let's put that 1, 2 is here after 1. That's going to be the thing. Okay, let's just make sure the rest that we, we already have. That's totally parenthesized. But let's make sure that we're correct. From A3 to A4, so we go to 3, 4 position, and it says right there. It's after the 3. And A5, 6, 5, 6, it says after the 5. That's that. Okay, so you have this nested loop. So that is problem number one. Okay, I'm sorry, just to go through all the detail or going through all the details of each one of these would be uh, a long experience. You got to try it on your own. Okay, 15.4. That's about largest common so longest common subsequence. I'm not going through it, but basically they they give you a y, they give you an x, and you got to fill it in. I didn't put in all the arrows, and I'm not simply out of because here's the problem with this with these type of questions. First of all, they give you a very long one, but once you make one mistake, boom, the rest of it is all wrong. Okay, because it doesn't follow. So, so that's what this is about. So there's your final answer. You can press pause and copy what you think is right. Um, I think I made a mistake from here on in. But, but that's okay, okay? Um, again, this is not intelligence, this is bookkeeping. This is um, not very hard. Okay, next, so that's 15.4-1. Okay, just keep in mind, on the first line, you're only gonna have either zeros or ones. On the first column, you're only gonna have zeros and ones. On the second, you're gonna have ones and twos. Here, you're gonna have ones and twos. Here you can have one, twos, and threes. Here you can have one, twos, and threes. Okay? It depends how, how far you can go. And the final answer is number six, and you follow it like that. Okay, let me just read the question. Before I erase this, let me read the question for number two. Give a pseudocode, a 
Okay, we're going to do that in a second. To reconstruct an, a longest common subsequence from the completed C table, this is the C table, and the original sequence X and Y. So they give you the X, they give you the Y, they give you the C code thing without the arrows. Okay, so this mostly doesn't have arrows. Okay, and it should work it, and it should, it should reconstruct the LCS. So let me just show you how the algorithm is going to work. What it's going to do basically is going to the the ones with the diagonals. That's where they match up. One, whoops. Okay, so here I'm wrong. Three. No, I'm wrong there too. Okay, something's wrong here. Uh, the diagonals match up, and so what you have to do is you have to follow the diagonals, follow the arrows for the diagonals, and that's the algorithm we're going to do. So let's write it up. Okay. Let's write up the algorithm. Reconstruct the longest common subsequence. Okay. And what's given is X, Y, C the matrix, M the length of the matrix, N the height of the matrix, the, the width and the breadth of the matrix, okay, the dimensions of x is the dimension of, I'm sorry, x is of length m, y is of length n, okay? Okay, let z, okay, z is going to be a longest common subsequence, be a one-dimensional array of size C, that's that's the matrix, M comma N. That was the six that we just had here a second ago. The final answer is right over there. So we're gonna so what what does that six represent? That six tells us that there are the longest common subsequence will have six letters in common. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna count those six things. And basically how do we do it? We go backwards following the arrows, but we don't, we're not given arrows, okay, so how do we do it? We go backwards looking at the conditions of the arrows. Okay, good, so let's do it. You ready? Count equals C of M comma N. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to go backwards. We're going to get our information backwards, we're going to put our information into we're going to put in our information into Z backwards. So we're going to first put in what the last thing is, because again, we're going backwards up the array, so we're going to put it in backwards. From count to count minus 1 to count minus 2, count minus 3 to count of 0, count of 1. Okay, let's do the following. I is equal to M. J is equal to N. That's, I told you, we're going to walk backwards up this C matrix. Well, here's the IJ position of where we're going to be, okay? And now we need a loop showing how we go back up the array. While I is greater than zero and J is greater than zero. In other words, is until we get to the upper corner, the upper left-hand corner. So do the following, okay? So now I need to say if the arrow's diagonal, what does it mean diagonal? What does it mean it's diagonal? Well, it means this letter matches up with that letter. So if x of i equals equals y of j, in other words, if the letters match, then z of count is equal to x of i, which is equal to y, damn, which is, well, I don't have to write it, which is equal to y of j. So, if the letters match, which means if there's really in the B matrix there's a diagonal arrow, then set that letter to be there. Okay, great. But, oh, one second, we're not finished. Once you put it in, now you go on to the next thing count is equal to count minus one. In other words, you've done 
the six, now go down to five, then go down to four, then go down to three, then go down to two. Okay. I is equal to I minus one. J is equal to J minus one. Go diagonal. The arrow, if we had access to the arrow, would be pointing this way, where I is equal to I minus one, J is equal to I minus one. So go do that. Okay. Okay, good. That's if the two things match. Else, if C, uh, shoot, C of I minus 1, comma, J is greater than or equal to C of I, comma, J minus 1. Remember, let me just remind you what we're talking about. We're, we're looking at this element, okay? If the letters match x, y, if the letters match, then we go up this way. If the letters don't match, then we either go here or here, okay? And which one, which one do we do? We do the maximum. So you look, which is higher? So if it's higher, then what do you do? Okay, then again, we're just, where should you, how should you climb up the C matrix? So if it's higher, then I equals I minus 1. Go that way. Uh, that way, sorry, go that way. Else, okay, if this one is not higher than this, if this is higher, so if it, this doesn't work, then go this way. So, J equals J minus 1. Okay? And the end of the whole thing is return, oops, the end of the whole thing, when you finish everything, return Z. That's what you're searching for. Z is the matrix, is the array with the characters from X and Y. So the only time you're really adding in anything to Z is right over here when they match up, when they are along the diagonal. Otherwise, you're just climbing the matrix, climbing the matrix from the lower right-hand corner to the upper left-hand corner, and which way you're going is described over here. Okay, nice little algorithm. Okay, now let's do section 15.5, 1 and 2. I'm just going to do some of them. Hold on, I just want to put the answers so I don't have to waste your time. Okay, this is the last problem. I'm not going to do number two, and I'll tell you why. Because the book, Corman, Lyserson, and Rivest does it differently than, than Sarah Bassey. I'm not sure everybody read through Corman, Lyserson, and Rivest. You should look through um, Sarah Bassey and how she did it. It makes it's much easier. The book is a little bit jumbled with the dummy variables and things like that. I'm not going to go through that. Okay, but I just want to do this. Construct an optimal bi binary search tree. Here's the thing, if I give you what the root of everything is, so we had this matrix, and I gave it to you in the thing, it tells you what the root is here, okay, so this is the 1 15th place, and it tells you 6 is the root, okay, and then each one of these numbers is some things, and if you remember, if you look at what I gave you, I circled what was there, again, everything below it was, was 0. Okay, so basically what they want you to do is look at this matrix and print out what's the root, what's the left child, what's the right child, what's the left child, what's the right child of, of each one. Okay, and this matrix, this will do it. Construct the optimal and binary search tree. Given this matrix root, given the ij, where's your starting point, where's your finishing point, and what's the last element. Okay, the reason why we're doing this is because recursive. If i is equal to j, in other words, if i is equal to j, so there's nothing in between there, then just return. Okay? If last is equal to zero, that means you're, you're starting, you're at the root, then just print out, print ij plus is the root. Okay, so we're, here's the number, is the root. If j is less than last, so now we're going to look at the left child, we're going to look at the right child. So, print root ij is the left child of last. Okay, so if we're looking at the left side. Else, print root ij is the right child. Now, whatever we do, we then have to 
recursively call this algorithm. Okay, you know, you know what the root is. So this will write root. That's the root of the tree. Then we tell you what the left child is. And then we tell you what the right child is. Okay, good. But you still have to go and do the same thing here and tell what the left child is here and what the right child is there. Okay, and so let me just read this to you because I didn't write it carefully. Construct optimal binary search tree. This is a recursive call back here. Root, the same root. I, because we're looking, we're, we're, we're at the same thing. I, root ij minus 1. So this was the root, and now we want to know all the children to the left of it. Okay, root ij. Okay, construct optimal binary search tree. Root, root ij plus 1. Now we're doing this side. We're doing this side. So. We, we, we know what he, what he is, we want to know what's here and what's here, okay? Comma j, comma root ij, okay? okay. And again, 15.2 we're not doing because it's a little bit, um, um, if you understood Corman lies in reverse, that's good. If not, go back to Sarah Bassey and she has it worked out. Okay, thank you.